Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to start a new series where I try to explain research papers. I hope that you enjoy this kind of content and having said that, let's dive in into today's topic, which is wave 2 back 2 a framework for self-supervised learning of speech recognitions by Alexey Baveski et al. from Facebook AI. The paper begins with a strong statement, namely that we show for the first time that learning powerful representations from speech audio alone followed by fine-tuning on transcribed speech can help perform the best semi-supervised methods while being conceptually simpler. Wave to vec 2 masks the speech input in the latent space and solves a contrastive task defined over quantization of the latent representations which are jointly learned. So basically, this is BERT for audio. And their experiment showed that using all label data of libre speech achieve 1.8 or 3.3, I believe this is on the clean and on the noisy set, were the rate. Okay, so on the clean and the other test sets. And the interesting part is that using just 10 minutes of labeled data and, and pre-training on 53k hours of unlabeled data, they are able to achieve 4.8 and 8.2 water rate, which is like pretty amazing if you ask me. Okay, so moving on to the introduction. So they say that the neural networks benefit from large quantities of label training data, which is obviously true. However, in many settings, label data is much harder to come by than unable data. Again, true. And the current speech recognition system requires thousands of hours of transcribed speech to reach acceptable performance, which is not available for the vast majority of the nearly 7,000 languages spoken worldwide. Which again is true. I mean, you can take a look at models like this speech too and see that they managed to achieve human level performance by using somewhere around like 10,000 hours, which, yeah, it's quite hard to obtain by for the majority of languages. And learning partly from label examples does not resemble language acquisition in humans. And they say that infants learn language by listening to adults around them, a process that requires learning good representation of speech. Which again, I find like pretty amazing that we humans are like able to acquire or learn a language so easily by just listening to people around us. Of course, we have like some kind of like supervised feedback from parents and people around us. But most of the learning is done by listening. Moving on, in this paper, we present a framework for self-supervised learning or stations from raw audio data. Our approach encodes speech audio via a multi-layer convolutional neural network and then mask spans of the resulting latent speech representations, similar to mask language modeling. So again, yeah, basically, both for audio. The latent representations are fed to a transformer network to build contextualized presentations and the model is trained via a contrasted task where the true latent is to be distinguished from distractors. The next part of the paper is quite interesting because they say that they don't use the continuous outputs given by the model, but instead they say that we learn discrete speech units via a gamble softmax to present the latent representation in the contrasted task, which we find to be more effective than non-quantized targets. And we're going to more details later in the video about this thing. And after pre-training the model on unable data, they fine-tune it on a speech recognition task using the connection temporal classification or CTC loss. And if you don't know what CTC is, I've created a video about it. The link is into the description. Moving on, now we go to the model section. And as they say, the model is composed of a multi-layer convolutional feature encoder, F, which takes an input row audio X and outputs a latent speech representation Z1 to ZT for T time steps. And also after that, there is a transformer that builds the representation Z1 to ZT and his role is to capture information from the entire sequence. Also, the output of the feature encoder is, is discretized to QT with a quantization module Z to Q to represent the targets in the self-supervised objective. Okay, so now to recap, this is the pre-training algorithm using unable data of the wave to vector model. 
So for the input, we have the row waveform X here, which is taken into the convolutional layer to produce the latent speech representations Z. And these latent speech representations are then taken into the transformer model to create the contextualized representations. So basically the role of the transformer is to combine and how is the model trained? So basically what you do is to mask some of the latent speech representations. Here in this example, the authors mask this one. And then you create those quantized representations from the latent speech representations. And your model is trained to find the real quantized representation of this mask time step using this contextualized representation from all these destructors Q here. The quantization module uses what's known as proto quantization and what it does is to create G codebooks or groups and each codebook has V entries here and during the four pass the algorithm chooses one entry from each codebook and then concatenates the results and apply a linear transformation to obtain the quantized vector skew. And this is basically so the quantization module what it basically does is it creates like G code books. Okay, so G1, G2, G3, and each code book has V entries. And during the four pass, the algorithm chooses one entry from each code book. So E1, E2, and let's say E3. And what it does, it concatenates these three entries E1, E2, E3, and then it applies a linear layer or a feed for layer to create the quantized vector skew. However, the selection of the code books is not a differentiable operation, so the authors choose to use the Gamba's softmax for the backward pass. And what it basically does is it maps the feature encoder Z into L, and then then it uses like this L as a proxy for computing the gradients for the discrete codebook entries. And this is done using the softmax operation. So we have a softmax over all these vectors else. And these are made more uniform using a temperature operation and also some noise that is taken from the uniform distribution. And in the end, they say exactly that, that during the four pass, the quarter Y is choosing by using the Rmax operation. And during the backward pass, this Gamba of max operation is used and now let's jump into the training so to pretend the model we mask a certain proportion of the timestamps in the latent feature encoder space similar to mask language modeling in BERT okay so we already knew that and the training objective requires identifying the correct quantized latent audio representation in a set of distractors for each mask timestamp and the fine model is fine-tuned on the label data so nothing new under the sun and the masking part we explain it already so we mask a proportion of the feature encoding outputs or timestamps before feeding them to the context network and replace them with a trained feature vector shared between all masked timesteps. And the training objective is a contrastive task LM, which is used to identify the true quantization latent speech representation for a masked timestep within a set of distraction. Okay what we discussed already but what is interesting is that they also use what's known as a diversity loss ld that tries to encourage the model to use the code boost entries equally often so the overall loss is composed of two terms the first one is the contrastive task lm and the other one is the diversity loss ld and this one as you can see like over here also contains a hyperparameter alpha which controls how much diversity loss to add to the overall loss. And now let's dig deeper into each of the two terms found in the loss function. So basically we have the contrastive loss and this is defined as a softmax applied over the cosine similarity taken between the context vector of the max time step and each of the distractors. And the role of this contrastive loss, again, is to maximize the cosine similarity between the true 
quantized tensor and the contextualized vector and to lower the cosine similarity between the contextualized vector of the mass time step and all the other quantized vectors or distractors. The second term, the diversity loss, is designed to increase the use of the quantized codebook representations. So basically, it does not allow the network to focus too much on some of the entries in the codebook, and it encourages the equal use of the V entries in each of the G codebooks. And it does that by maximizing the entropy of the average softmax distribution over the codebook entries. This is the formula for the diversity loss. So what we have here is a normalizing term 1 over gv g again is the number of codebooks v is the number of entries in each codebook and here we have a sum over the entropies found over the entropies found in each codebook so yeah that's basically it the rest of the paper is mostly details it talks about things like the data sets used for evaluating the model, uh, pre-training hyperparameters, results, and so on. I'll go through each section very briefly and I will highlight the important points in each one. So for the data sets, they use the LibreSpeech without transcriptions that contains the 960 hours of audio and also the LibreFox LV 60k for pre-training and for fine tuning they use five label data set settings the full transcribed libre speech the train clean 100 and also some limited resource subsets of libre speech called libre light that contain 10 hours of label audio one hour of label audio and finally 10 minutes of label audio and they also evaluate the model on timid data set for phoneme recognition and for fine-tuning after the model has been pre-trained what they basically do is something pretty standard they add a randomly initialized output layer on top of the transformer to predict the characters for libre speech or libre light and phonemes for timmy and they also employ a language model for decoding and they select a foreground model and a transform model for doing that both trained on libre speech lm corpus these are the results on libre speech the subsets from 10 minutes to 100 hours the interesting part is over here on 10 minutes because with so little data they managed to obtain like uh, really good performance on this test set. Basically, they obtain 4.8 on the clean test set and 8.2 on the noisy test set using the large version of the model and the transformer language model. Also, they obtain like state-of-the-art results at the time of writing the paper on most of the other test subsets. If you are interested about these results, I encourage you to look at them and get a better understanding, but I won't go into too much details. The results on the full libre speech 960 hours are presented in table 2, and here the authors compare the wave to vector model with supervised and semi-supervised methods. I outline here the best model in each category, and as you can see, the wave to vector model obtains like pretty much better results than all the other models. However, these results should be taken with a grain of salt because the wave to vector model uses a transforming language model, while the other two use a long short term memory language model, which in the end might make like quite a big of a difference in results. The results on timid phoneme recognition are depicted in table three. And here we can see again that the model obtains pretty much like state of the art results being better than other pre-trained models like VQ, wave to vec or wave to vec And also in table four, we have the justification for using quantization. Basically, the authors did an ablation study where they tried all the possible combinations in inputs and targets, and they observed that the best results were obtained for using continuous inputs and quantized targets. And that's basically the paper. I hope that you enjoyed the new series. Please let me know in the comments below what you think about this new series. And until next time, I hope that you have a wonderful time. Bye bye.